hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome to another interesting episode of the crazy week that was with barista neze it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezeville double wahala for the body <laughs> and the owner of the body <laughs> guys today's episode of the crazy week that was with barista neze starts with the story of oluwa shenwu <laughs> and Nikolakbo Kuti, simply known as Sheung Kuti. Sheung Kuti is a singer and a musician, but he's more popularly known as the son of Afrobeat pioneer and activist Fela and Nikolakbo Kuti, aka Fela. In the interest of the Gen Zs, the Indomi generation, and the pandemic babies, let me shed a little light. Fela was a musician, but he was even more importantly known as an activist, a political activist, who used his music as a tool to expose the ills and the decay in governance. As a result of his activism, Fela faced plenty of attacks by the then Junta military government of Nigeria. It was so bad that his mother was even murdered. She was thrown out of the second floor of a story building to her death by men in uniform during one of their raids. Now, this is not a history class. This is just me trying to set the background to our story. But hey, feel free to learn. After all, what's a Neze video without some fun? And some enlightenment. So the great fella Anikula Okuti had about seven kids, at least seven known kids, and Shewo Kuti is the youngest son of them all. So in the crazy week that was, we saw Shewo Kuti right on the third Milan Bridge in Lagos in a very heated altercation with a policeman. And in that video, Shewo was photographed live. <laughs> they didn't tell us. We saw it with our Korokoro eyes where he was physically assaulting and verbally abusing a uniformed personnel. And we must admit that the policeman made no single attempt to retaliate. The officer remained calm, composed, chopping the slaps with full respect, dignity, utmost humility, and in good faith. Those, those, those are. And when this video made it out, all hell was let loose. Shemu Kuti was capitated completely for, you know, violating a policeman, disrespecting an officer of the law, daring to beat up a uniformed personnel. He was lambasted. Some people even left the matter at hand. <laughs> they left the matters arising and began to snoop and see some other things. So. Can you see a pro people? Some people left the police issue and started to observe the way <laughs> Shemu Kuti treated his wife when she came out to calm him down. Like he ordered her in, get out, get into the car, my friend. And the woman picked race and ran into the car. Ah! The women rights advocates, they, they fled up. They were like, this man, I can see from a thousand miles that this man is a molester. Look at the way he treated his wife. As in, what kind of a man will be upset and angry and his wife cannot calm him down? If your wife does not calm you down, who can calm you down? Oh, she Lord Commander, before you know it, people declared her that she's living in bondage. She's a victim of abuse. You see why I don't like Apuroko people? They have left matters arising and they're discussing the one that nobody sent them to discuss. Oh, Shelly doesn't know what to think about that situation where she ordered his wife back into the car and the immediate alacrity that the woman used to Chris, do you see anything there? Please let us go back to the story. So a lot of people condemned Shewu's action. They are like, yes, every day we complain about police brutality, police brutality, but please, when we see civilian brutality, let us talk through, let us stop supporting bad things. They were like, Shewu was clearly in the wrong for raising his hand against a uniformed policeman and that we should be just and fair and equitable enough to say it when we see it. For the other set of people, they threw their weight solemnly, firmly, completely behind Shion. They contend that civilians have constantly been abused and degraded by his men in uniform and they relished the sight of seeing them get a dose of their own medicine. They argued that given the excesses usually demonstrated by policemen, we never can tell what that policeman would have done to have warranted Shemu to give him all those hot slaps. And it was such a coincidence that immediately, like the next day after Shemu's case, there was this very gross and horrible video of some group of policemen assaulting a civilian, like a bike rider. He was totally beaten up on the streets by a policeman. And people were like, you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> you see why you should show this man no mercy? You see why that man, that policeman, deserves to have gotten what he got from Shewe Kuti? So the question then arose, what exactly did this policeman actually do to deserve those hot, thunderous, eye-blinding slaps 
from Shinwon Kuti. Well, Shinwon has given his own side of the story through an official statement released by his manager. Let us hear it. Ayo Moses, Shinwon's manager, said, On this said day, Shinwon was driving with his family on the Todd Mainland Bridge when he was suddenly hit from behind by a police truck being driven by an officer who was reportedly drunk. This act from the officer led Shinwon's daughter into sudden shock as she was visibly shaken by the heat. So this made Shinwon pursue the truck, double-crossed it and forced it to a stop. And when the policeman got down from the truck, instead of apologizing, he was arguing with Shinwon, which provoked him to slap the officer. People should realize that men in uniforms also provoke civilians. Immunity is no excuse for impunity. Mm. So guys, what do you think about Shemu's version of what happened? Do you think that this is enough justification for this action of Shemu? Do you think that what the policeman did was actually enough for Shemu to have double-crossed the police vehicle and began beating up the policeman? Or do you think that Shemu was just being heady and acting above the law because of the kind of family he's coming from? Uh, Instagram can't explain. You know how many police are done tear slap? They will say because you be fella picking. It doesn't matter because Jesus be God picking if he die for you. You must know who you are before you make your move. So I, I make my move from where I did because I know who I am. That's how I must make my move. Guys, this battle, enmity, and overall beef between civilians and the police was then again reopened. And different opinions were flying heleta skeleta. But is this problem only in Nigeria? Bikonu, tell me, my people in other countries. Is there this underlying hatred that exists between civilians? and men in uniform in your country? Speak to us in the comment section. Is police brutality really a thing where you come from? Oh, not only we, waka come. Let us know what the situation is like in your country. Well, after this video made it out, the Inspector General of Police immediately ordered the arrest and prosecution of Shenwu Kuti. And on Monday the 15th of May, two days after that assault, Shenwu Kuti officially turned himself in. But why was he handcuffed again? <laughs> what does the law say about constraining and restraining people with handcuffs and chains? What did the law say? Let me tell you. Now, a suspect to a crime is deemed innocent and should not be handcuffed, bound or restrained by the police except these. Number one, where there is violence or an attempt to escape. Two, when it is necessary for the safety of that suspect. And three, upon a court order. So a lot of people have condemned why the police had to have Shewu in bounds. So Shewu has now been arraigned before a magistrate court sitting in Yaba, Lagos. He has been charged with the offenses of assaulting an inspector, driving dangerously, and deliberately blocking a moving police vehicle. This of course is a felony and if convicted on all of them can attract up to five years jail term. He has been granted bail which will kick effect after four days due to some interrogation blah 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 blah. So he's going to remain in police custody for the next four days and then his bail will kick off. And he was granted bail in the sum of one million naira, two reasonable shorties and a three year tax payment receipt which is verifiable. And one of these shorties must have a landed property within the jurisdiction of the courts. Mm, very stringent bill conditions. So Shewon has employed the services of renowned human rights lawyer and activist Femi Falano and the trial has begun. So let us see how this ends. I'm going to keep you updated as it goes. What do you think this is going to end as? Do you think that these charges will be dropped and it's going to end in, okay, offer a public apology, let us mend things, or do you think that this matter will go to court and Shewon would actually be sentenced to prison? Do let me know what you think about all of this, the assault. Is it justifiable? Do you support Shewon or do you condemn his actions? Do you think that justice should be tampered mercifully towards him, given that he has a long history of, you know, uniformed men assaulting and killing his family members so possibly maybe he nurses some kind of anger or bitterness towards them or do you think that he has contravened the law and he should face punishment what do you think about this shinwon kuti situation drop your opinions down in the comment section the next story on the crazy week that was with barista neze 
is actually a tragedy but it's important we speak about it and it was more particularly of interest to me because it happened right in my resident town of Potakot. You see with what we are seeing right now with what is prevalent right now with all the calamities and catastrophes that have been breaking out in our society right now <laughs> I want to advise every mother every potential mother and father if you are praying for a child be very specific to God though be very specific the kind of child you want. Please and please include these exceptions. <laughs> Pray to God for a child that will not disgrace you and disgrace your family name on social media <laughs> because they want fame or content or popularity. Pray because when I see some people on social media, I used to wonder, <laughs> does this person have mommy or daddy? How are their parents feeling? Pray that one. The second one you should pray for very intentionally <laughs> if you want a baby boy, Pray for a boy boy. <laughs> if you want a baby girl, pray for a girl. See, no offense to the LGBTQRT community, okay? But we are free to pray for and wish for what we want. Okay? Nobody can force you to pray for what you don't want. Okay? Good. So I was going through... Is he an actor? What should I call that man now? Or that woman? Uche Madragu's page the other day on Instagram. And I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. This is somebody's... My baby boy. Bouncing baby boy. What did your wife give birth to? Bouncing baby boy. But the parents might not be able to explain what they are seeing right now. So right now, in this current day and time, and with this path that some of our African brothers are threading these days, you have to be specific to God and ask him the one that you want to <laughs> let it be clear. Then the third prayer that everybody should ask for is to pray to God for a child that will not kill them. Because the kind of story and news that I come across these days of what children are doing to their parents is becoming alarming. So the second story on today's episode of the crazy week that was with Barrister Nezer is the story of a son, a native of Eleme in River State, who eliminated his mother simply because she didn't give him the money that he requested of her. He was apprehended and when asked what his reason was for putting an end to his mother's life, let us hear what he had to say. What, who is this? It's my mother now. Is your mother? Uh, what happened? Why is, why is she like this? Yeah, yesterday I go by here. I friend by So, we come there now. This, this, yesterday I come and say, okay, this morning she will do money for me. My husband buy clothes. Oh, She's go for the by She say, okay, this early in the morning, before I wake up, she don't come out. Say she go to the by she said she go to the bear. Once I said, out of the money, I said, making with her, it's good for the bear. She said, she not go with her for me. I said, ah, you know, uh, for the bear, how it will be. Okay, you know what, I no go. She not talk anything. I said, okay, now, I'm looking with her. Now, I'm not be say, as I go that side, now, I don't come go to the main bear. Uh -uh. <coughs> so, I can't say, okay, then, uh, she can't say she'll go with her. I found then. Uh, she can't go with her 20,000. I can't wake up from sleep. Where I just sleep. Come meet her, say. And she give me money. She's got 10,000. Give me. I say, 10,000. Give me. Waiting. I can't the reason the. I can't the reason the money. Say, 10,000. Which place of you go buy club of office? I think I go there. I say, okay. You know. You know, if you buy. I can't work out the river. She can't insult me. They cost me. Tell me, my mate, they work. My mate, they work. I see my mate work. I say, ah, if my mate, they work, I can't ask you for money. You know, Go work. straight to the pump. What happened? Uh -huh. So now. So we can then I think anger. She can't insult me. I can't work anger. She can't insult me. After giving me ten thousand naira, she don't give me the ten thousand. Yes. So, so now when she don't act, she don't make me bad. I can't hit her. When she you hit her, what did you hit her? At the whole now, I go tell you like. Where she there? Where you hit her? With the she will there here now for this house now for kitchen. Yeah, where we there? Where she want to prepare food? That's where I say. Now for this house where where uh, she prepare food? Uh, so she, if you don't give me ten thousand, that's why you can't hold. She can't go with your twenty. Can't hide ten. Can't hide. Then say when me I start, I can't say how much I want to use ten thousand. Do my I come and live on the go come and go the beggar again. Ah, my question, she can't do the insult me, the cost me. Don't talk, talk. I don't talk, say I don't tire. I say everything there now. Man, me say me the anger come out now. I finish up. Me now we go be say my own life end like that because I don't do here. I don't do here. Sir, me know that life is here. Sir, do your life. I go. I won't go. I won't die. Sir, do your thirty years. I don't do your thirty years. I guess we try, we try problem. That's it. I don't move all the whole thing. Waka all the whole waka. As I did here, as I did there, as now, as I did like this. Now it keep me like this. I'm supposed to finish my school. I run for my school. So let me ask you a question. Why do you say I wanted to go with all your own money for you? More, Why? Yeah. See, more account, more account. I get this. I guess we try problem. 
You see, this is so, so unfortunate. But one thing struck me in this video. What struck me was how he repeatedly and continuously attributed his problems to spiritual. How illiteracy, poverty, and mental challenges are easily dismissed as a spiritual attack or a spiritual problem in Nigeria. I don't know whether it's like that in other African countries, but this is fast becoming a pandemic. It just opens up this decay of how we wrongly diagnose our problems, tackling it wrongly until it further degenerates and deteriorates. Many things we spend praying morning, afternoon, and night and seeking healing and miracle in the church sometimes have a physical and practical solution but here everything is spiritual everything is an attack everything is from enemies everything is somebody trying to harm you and we lose focus of what the problem really is until the situation gets so bad and just like we have in this case just imagine a son putting an end to his own mother's life and talking about him having spiritual problem and spiritual problem a child who is supposed to bring you joy happiness fulfillment and blessings how we do not understand the importance and the effects of mental health challenges how the government makes no provision for these kinds of mental issues rather we categorize it as spiritual and we're going from one church to another giving pastors money to intervene and pray for us and give us holy water holy candle and holy fire thinking that it's someone that is trying to hurt you or ruin you or make you use less you know overtly suspicious of everything that is us for you so guys what do you think about this situation judging from what you heard from this man do you actually think that he has a spiritual problem which led him to attack and eliminate his mother or do you think that he's just a blood thirsty blood sucking rottweiler who knew what he was doing but could not control his anger and emotions let me know your thoughts about this development in the comments section and may her soul rest in perfect peace so guys we have come to the end of today's episode of the crazy week that was with barista neze which of these stories would you like to react to drop all your comments and feedback down in the comment section and in case you do not know or in case you have not subscribed don't forget that i also have a personal channel where i showcase my personal life marriage family children work career everything up close and personal and the name of that channel is neze peperempe i'm going to leave the link in the description box and maybe somewhere in the comment section so click on it and subscribe and be a full nezevillian all round all the way all through and if you're yet to subscribe don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel give this video a big thumbs up turn on your bell notifications drop your comments in the comment section and stay glued for we have so much more coming your way it's me again your girl barista neze and this is Nezaville. I'll see you guys in my next one for now. Bye.